welcome to a web of stories and my name is Melinda and today I'm gonna to do part one of kind of a two-part series that I've been thinking about doing for a while and just haven't done I'm not sure why because it's actually a pretty easy series but um, I was kind of inspired by Leandra at Leandra the TBR zero when she went through all the series that she's reading and I thought you know I've got a lot of series going I should probably do that too so I actually divided this into two videos, otherwise it would be really long and kind of tedious. Um, and today I'm gonna to talk about the series that I'm reading that I'm caught up on. This just means that I have read all the books in the series that have been released as of today. And um, I actually have eight different series here. Um, all but one of them are mystery series. And I'm gonna start with my two very favorite series. And if you've seen this video before, you know what they are. <laughs> so the first one is the Armand Gamache series by Louise Penny. Um, there are 18 books and one novella in this series. The novella is called The Hangman. It was actually written as part of a program they had in Canada where established writers would write uh, short stories based on their works or that go into their series, whatever. Um, written with, towards an adult audience, but with a lower reading level for people who were, uh, for adults who were uh, learning to read. Um, but it's actually a pretty good little, little short story, actually. Um, I love the series. I love everything about it. Um, <laughs> I just am on tenterhooks for when the next one comes out, which I think will probably be, and I think it's August that she releases her books. Um, I will never ever forgive Amazon Video for canceling the TV series after one season, especially when they ended it on a on a cliffhanger. Um, that was just wrong, so wrong. But this is such a wonderful series. It's, it is like, even though there's a lot of murder and dark things, it's also like wrapping yourself in a nice warm blanket. I love it so much. And the second one, which I haven't talked about as much lately, mostly because it's been a little bit longer since a book came out in the series, um, but that is the Cork O'Connor series by William Kent Kruger. So in that series, there are 19 books, which is which includes one prequel. So the 18th book in the series is a prequel. You do need to read both this and the Gamash series in order, really, because there's storylines that go from book to book. Um, but with the Cork O'Connor series, you can read that prequel at any point that you read the series. You can read it at the beginning, you can read it at the end, doesn't matter. <laughs> But otherwise, the rest of the, the, the 17 other books you do kind of, is this up, right? 18, excuse me, 18 other books you do kind of need to read in order. So this is set in the Northwoods of Minnesota up by the Boundary Waters. And Cork O'Connor is a quarter Ojibwe. Um, he starts the series as a cop or sheriff. No, he starts the series as an ex-sheriff, then he becomes a sheriff, and he's an then he becomes an investigator. It, it's a whole thing. Um, but he walks two worlds between like the white world and the Ojibwe world. So there's a lot of um, indigenous characters in it. They, he talks a lot about indigenous cultures and spirituality. Um, William Kent Kruger is not himself indigenous, but he does work with the indigenous community to make sure that he is accurately portraying them. And um, I just, this book starts out at a high and usually you know a lot of series start out up here and they just kind of start going like down here until it's ready to you're ready to be done this one starts about here and goes for the first nine books is about here and somewhere around book 10 ish it goes up here <laughs> so it's amazing it, it's just really good um so that is those are my two very favorite mystery series there is not a cork o'connor book coming out this year um every couple of years William Kent Kruger releases a standalone instead, and this year he is doing that. It's called The River We Remember, and it is coming out in September. And it is a, his, well, he says it's a mystery. I, my guess is it's kind of like his first standalone, which was Ordinary Grace, where it's kind of like historical fiction, literary fiction with a mystery element. That's my guess. I don't know. I haven't read it. Just, there you go. So the next two series that I have are actually pretty... I don't want to say they're similar, but I think that they appeal to, if you like one, you're going to like the other sort of thing. And there are similarities, but I don't think the series are actually similar. The first one is The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. So this is, this is everywhere. I think most people are familiar with this one, but it is set in a retirement community in England where four residents of this uh, community have what they call the Thursday Murder Club, where 
each Thursday they get together and they kind of go through and like they're like amateur crime solvers and it's just sort of a fun thing until until they start working on a real murder and that's the first book and it kind of gets progressively a little bit more involved from there um, these are books are a lot of fun the second book which is either the bullet the mist or the man who died twice I can't remember which one's which <laughs> second one's my favorite I will say that although they're all great um, they are developing this into a television series, um, I guess. I don't know how they're going to convince Helen Mirren to play Elizabeth, but I, I think she's the only person who can play that role. So we'll see if they're successful in casting Helen Mirren in this. And the other one is um, another British uh, crime series. Oh, I'm, I should go back. There are three books in the Thursday Murder Club currently. There are still books coming out. There's another one coming out in September. The next one is The Marlowe Murder Club, and the second book in the series just recently came out, uh, which was Death Comes to Marlowe. I believe that's the name of it. I should have checked that. <laughs> um, this is set in a small English town called Marlowe, and there are three women who form the Marlowe Murder Club. One of them is an, elder, is an older woman. I don't want to say elderly because she has more life in her than most people you will ever meet, but she is someone in her 70s, in her mid to late 70s. Um, but her club is not just people of her own age. There is also a woman who's a dog walker who's very much in the middle age bracket. Like she's, I don't know, probably like 50-ish. And then there's also the vicar's wife who's probably a bit younger, maybe just kind of really getting up to the lower edge of middle age. But they're all women that society just sort of ignores. And they become the Marlowe Murder Club. And uh, the mysteries in these are pretty good. The mystery in the first one is a little better than the second one. I enjoyed them both. Um, I don't know if there are plans to turn this into a television series, but Robert Thorogood, the author, is a television writer. He created the show Death in Paradise. Um, and there's a new one that I have been watching, and I can't remember the name of it, but he created that one too. I think it's a spinoff of Death in Paradise. But yeah, those two, I mean, if you like one, you're going to like the other. I would say that Marlowe Murder Club is the cozier of the two, but Thursday Murder Club is a little bit more comic of the two, if that helps in any way. And so then the next three are also mystery series that I have. And um, they're, they're sort of, I don't want to say they're kind of run-of-the-mill mysteries because I don't think any of these are run-of-the-mill. If they were, I wouldn't be reading them. But they sort of fall into what you would expect from a, a mystery series. And the first one is the Harbinger Car series by Ellie Griffiths. As far as I know, this series is still continuing. There are three books in it. Um, I really enjoyed the first, the, it was The Stranger Diaries and then The Postscript Murders and then Bleeding Heart Yard. Um, there's a change in the series with the third book that, I don't know, I didn't, it, it didn't work as well for me. I will say that, although I am going to continue to read in this series. I really like Ellie Griffiths as a writer and uh, I think she can probably turn this, this series around a little bit. But um, it's set, the first two books <laughs> are set um, in a little town around Brighton. Um, and the detective is a uh, woman named Harbinger Carr who is, she, I don't know. I'll have to look that up and see exactly what she is. She's not, um, she's not Muslim, but I will look it up and add it. I, I feel bad that I don't have that. Um, but the murders in the first two books were very literary based and I really enjoyed that. The first one was like there was a novel inside of a novel which was really fun and the second one was kind of an ode to um, classic mysteries, golden age mysteries. The third one she moved Harbinger to London and like kind of did a like re, you know reunion, high school reunion murder and I just it didn't have the charm that the first two did so I'm hoping that she does something to kind of recapture the charm of the first book but I am going to continue reading it. The next is Two Rivers by Anne Cleves. Um, there's two books in the series, and uh, the third one is coming out in a, sometime this year. I didn't check the date, but there is a third one coming. And they have done a television adaptation of the first one, which I think was called The Long Call. Um, and this is set in a small town, I believe in Southern England. Um, the detective in town is a young, very successful detective who, um, comes his family his family of origin was members of like a religious cultish like a super conservative religious community that borders on cultish and a lot of that is involved in the first book um i really thought it was a strong mystery and the second one was a strong mystery as well um the the adaptation is playing on either acorn or brit box i can't remember which one but i will tell you if you watch if you read the book and watch the adaptation they start in the same place 
and they end in the same place, but they take two different roads to get there. It's, it's very, I remember watching it going, I, did I actually read this book? Because this is not at all what I remember, <laughs> but which I don't have a problem with that. I think that the adaptation caught, the, um, captured the spirit of the books, and that's really what I, I need in an adaptation. So the next, uh, the last one of this little group of three series that I have is the Maggie Darcy series by Sarah Stewart Taylor. There are currently three books in this one and a fourth one is coming out this year. Now, Maggie Darcy is an Irish American cop uh, on Long Island. That's how it starts. In the first book, she ends up going to Ireland to try to figure out what happened to her sister who um, died under mysterious circumstances decades earlier. And so a lot of it's her being a little detective in Ireland and meeting a guy and all that fun stuff. Um, the second book, she's back on Long Island and um, the Irish guy comes over. So there's a little bit of Irish there, but I will say the second book was not as, not as successful for me because I really love the Irish part of it. Um, the third book, she's back in Ireland and it does sound like she's gonna stay there for the rest of the series. So I am very happy about that. Thought it was pretty strong mysteries. Um, I did really like them. I especially liked them when they were in Ireland. Um, Sarah Stewart Taylor is, is American, but I'm pretty sure she's Irish American and she understands Irish culture very well. And then my final series that I am caught up with. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any more. There's currently two books in this series and they are fairy tale retellings. Um, and I don't know if there's going to be any more, but they're the Fractured Fables by Alex E. Harrow. The first one is a retelling of Cinderella. And the second one is a retelling of, is it Sleeping Beauty or Snow White? It's Snow White. But it's actually kind of like retold through the evil stepmother's eyes. It's very interesting. I like them both, but the second one was really good. And as I said, they're novellas. You can read them, you know, in an hour or two. They're a lot of fun. Um, they may be... The characters are like late teens, early 20s, so they may be categorized as young adult, but they are fantasy and they are fairy tale retellings. And if you like that, definitely give these a try because they're a lot of fun. Um, I hope, I really do hope there are more books, but I checked on Goodreads and I didn't see anything about any book forthcoming. And the way the second book ended, it kind of made me feel like there might not be any more books. So I'm really hoping that I was wrong and there's going to be more because I really enjoyed these. So those are the series that I have read that I have finished, I'm caught up with. I'm just waiting for the next book. And as I said, they're all still in progress except possibly fra Fractured Fables. Um, but my next video, which will come out next week, I'm gonna talk about all the series that I am not done with and that are still in progress. So if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.